Okay, back again. Trying to get as much done as I possibly can. I thought I'd just throw the plexiglass in there and get that finished also too today. Uh, we're going to do a, this is going to be a fast demonstration. So we're going to do a paint on demonstration of the Supreme 8 Ambient Light Projection Screen Paint. Um, we're going to roll this on cardboard in a form of clear kind of plexiglass. Uh, this is a kind of plastic material used when they do the uh, drop ceilings. Uh, area, any area that has lighting in that particular area, they put this kind of clear material in between. Um, I got my fan set up here. There is the wall right there. We're going to be laying the screen against. And then over there, I have my projector. So uh, let's start this demonstration and let's uh, get it started. So we're going to do our paint on demonstration. Now, pretty much easy. This is this stuff is pretty easy to apply to. Um, an everyday nat roller it doesn't make a difference. I buy my nat rollers from Dollar Tree. I don't have to buy expensive nat roller. I do not suggest uh, um, using a paintbrush. Please don't do that. But I do. You can use a paint sprayer if you want. Um, over here, I do have my uh, Wagner. Uh, I think Wagner 150 uh, paint sprayer over here. I use that from time to time. All right, and there's the screen over there on the white wall. So let's get this started. All right, so here's our paint right here. As it says, it has a very interesting color to it. We'll pour some of it out so you can see what we've been talking about. There we go. See, so it has a very interesting color to it. And we'll take our roller and we'll just it doesn't make a difference in what direction you go, to tell you the truth. Some people say you want to go up and down, or oh, just forget all that. We're not going to go down that. This is a one coat application, so pretty much whatever you coat this on is going to stay. I can, that doesn't make a difference at all. It's not going to damage the screen. It's completely foolproof. And this is all plexiglass. So you can see this is a plexiglass material, nice and shiny. There's no priming or any of that. You don't have to worry about any of that. You can just put it over top the surface and you're done. And we're going to do uh, cardboard too so it's cardboard it's frog tape there's everything in there voila done fs we're done it's up to you and how you want to do it we're done so we got frog tape in there, we got um, plexiglass and cardboard and everything else all mixed in there. An everyday nap roller, that's all you need. Just want to get my edges there, that's it, done. All right, so as I said before, when it comes to this kind of technology, um, the wetter it is, the darker it's going to get. So you have to let it dry, okay? So let's lean this up. See if I can, I should have made an edge there that I can grip onto. I just take this on the corner. That's all. No worrying about. It. I'll just go right back over it again, and I'll lay it right there on our wall. I pray I get none of that on the wall. We we'll turn our fan on. Fortunately, I'm doing this in my good jeans. And as it starts to dry, it becomes lighter. And where is my my video? Let's start my demonstration on. And of course, always in a fully lit environment, as always. It takes no time to dry. It's already dry on my hand. And for those of you who want to know the projector, as always, my Sony VPL. This is a 4300 lumen projector, 1920 by 1200 WXGA. Now, in this demonstration, the background of this demonstration is black. That's why it's pulling up black. Look at the raindrops. Details in the raindrops, not seen here, seen there. As the screen starts to dry, fans on, it'll get brighter and brighter right in front of you. 
Let's grab, let me see what else we got. Cause I got a bunch of videos on here. Let's grab, um, let's see. Let me do this one. Screen is still wet. Go. Let's pull up some reds. Hold on. Let me go back. I like the corn. The yellows and the corns. Love that. All right. Let's pull up some reds. Right. This is done. Now my screen, wait for a minute, is still wet. As it starts to dry, see right here, where it's basically dark, as it starts to dry, it starts to lighten up. Okay, let's grab our lights. Whew. Man, I came downstairs on a slant. That was not a good thing. Told you, as the screen starts to dry, they get lighter and lighter and lighter. The white levels start to push through. That's my screen, just about dried. Get this fan out of the way.
And like I said, when you paint the screens, they come out dark at first because you have to give the paint a chance to dry. That's why I have the fan sitting in front of it. As it starts to dry, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And the white levels get a little lighter. Okay, we did this with lights off. Let's go over here and do this with lights on. You gotta give it a chance for the screen to dry. Some people are so quick to judge and say, hey, look, the screen looks dark. You gotta give the screen a chance to dry. As it starts to dry, it gets brighter. Get the lights again. Whew, man, I'm telling you, I should just put a treadmill in here and then that way I can just run up and down the stairs on the treadmill. There we go. Because I have to do lights on and lights off because I got some people want to do it with the lights off, some people want the lights on, everybody wants it a different way. Now, come over here. Like I said, you gotta give the screen a chance to dry. When the screen starts to dry, it gets brighter. Anytime you use dark, any kind of black technology, when it's wet, it's always darker. And of course, let's go with basically makes it shine the most is when you're dealing with contrast. And the more it dries, the brighter it gets. This is when I tell you that contrast is everything. Got to shrink a little bit. There we go. Fight with that a bit. Keep in mind, this was two postal shipping boxes, frog tape, and a piece of plexiglass. Can't even see it, can you? But it's in there. I 
think I'm going to give me an outside fireplace. I'm not going to hold up an outside fireplace. I wish they would have put switches downstairs. And that's 4,300 lumen projectors standing behind me. I see this a lot in churches. I see churches with really high-end projectors, 10,000 lumens projectors, and they think because they had a white screen with it, you know, they got enough lumens to pull it up. And like I keep telling them, it's not the lumens, it's the contrast. And this is a United States shipping postal box and frog tape. That's my screen. So you can build a screen at anything you want. Shipping boxes, that's my screen. Beautiful Christmas music playing in the background. It's beautiful. I can't wait for Christmas to tell you the truth. We got that real burning fireplace in there. I do plan to use it. With the bright reds. Look how they feed on the white wall. All right. I think after this, I'm not going to be doing too many videos after this. So this is going to be my last one for a while. Um, I got a lot of work to do, so if you don't see videos, that's the reason why. I got a ton of orders to attend to. It's going to be very busy next couple weeks, and I still have previous orders to have to ship out. So basically, it just proves my point when I tell you that when I first did the screen, put it up, it was dark. Yeah, it was dark. Because anytime I use, uh, used a black technology, it's always going to come out darker. Now ours is going to pull, the white levels are going to start to kick in uh, due to the fact that, like I said, uh, uh, when the paint starts to dry, those white levels start to kick in a little bit higher. So let me go back a little bit more. We're going to trot those stairs again. Whew. Look at the red on the white wall, look at the red on our screen. And there you go. Just watched the live demonstration of a Supreme Ambient Light, a Supreme 8 Ambient Light Rejection screen paint being coated on a piece of plexiglass cardboard and frog tape that's what i built my screen out of you watch me roll that on with no problem whatsoever no priming no sandy nothing
Now I'm doing the lights off because this gives the white wall a chance. If I turn the lights on, that white wall is going to completely wash out. Our screen is going to stay intact. We've seen this demonstration, so I don't have to back that up. I've done that too many times. Now you see it. When the screen's dry, you see the advancement, don't you? When that screen was wet, this part looked brighter, that looked darker. Now look at this. See the detail in the raindrops here? You can't see it there, but you can see it there. And skin tones. See how the ice has detail? No detail. Completely washed out. Look at the engraving on the coins. Completely washed out. Look at it on the black technology. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see what else we got here. I got some videos in here that I was doing. Um, let's go to, uh, let's see what I wanna do. I think we did the strawberries already, did we not? Corn. Look at that. Detail. There's no detail. See that in the right there? Washed out. Can't see it. Detail. That's why you need that contrast. Contrast is very important. It allows you to see all the details. If you didn't have contrast, imagine if you bought a comic book and there was no contrast in that comic book. That'd be one bland image. I said, no, I didn't run out of video. Oh, I was about to say, I know I got more video in here. And this is why I was pointing out OLED background demonstrations are black. See how it's coming up gray here? It should never look gray on a screen. It's background is supposed to always be black in the OLED. Got to give the technology some time. I know when I did the paint on demonstration, some of you bailed out of the room because you said, well, look, the, the paint's dark. It's just too dark. No, you got to give it a chance to dry. That's why I have the fan here. As it dries, they get brighter. Look at the detail here in the cube.
All right. I'm trying to get my image to go back to normal to where I had it at. I think I'm going to finish up here because I got orders. I got a bunch of orders that just popped up and I got to tend to those orders and get them out of the way. Um, so I got to get started on those orders. Now mind you, this is lights on off, all right? It's lights off, let me go back here a minute. I'm just gonna do this one more with the lights on and then after that I gotta, be, I gotta get out of here because I have work to do today. And I'd like to thank you all, you know, I'm appreciated. If two or three people come in the room, I'm appreciated. I don't have to have uh, tons of people to come in the room, just as long as somebody sees what I'm doing, you know what I mean? And these demonstrations are posted everywhere. They're posted on our Twitter page. I have a big following on Facebook. I do a, a bigger on YouTube. And I have a lot of people from overseas that I do business with, and they come and they watch these demonstrations. But there you are. Lights on, fully lit environment. And this is what black technology is designed to do. Pause it for a minute. Let me get my phone over here. I got it way over here. That's why I keep going back because the phone's over there. So look at this. That's why you have to have contrast. The rest of the screen is faded out. It's not even there. You can't even see it. Look at that. And it's also pouring white levels at the same time. That's why contrast is important. You have to have it. Now, see, just just a thought, just just a train of thought to mind. If you buy a forty three hundred lumen projector, all right, and you're thinking because you have forty three hundred lumens or you have higher than this, that you think that because you're going to be in a fully lit environment, that you're going to be to pick up your image on your wall, you're not going to pick it up. I'm just telling you. You're seeing it right here. You're not going to be to pick it up with forty three hundred lumens, at all. If you have this in your church, you have this in your business. You're not, if you're using a light gray screen, a white gray, a white screen, you're not going to pick it up. You're not going to pick up contrast. You're not going to pick up color pop. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to have your environment in some kind of ambient light controlled environment, and you're going to have to steer as much light away from the screen, which tells you right there off the bat, if you're using this for a dedicated theater room, well, sad thing about it is, yes, it's going to be dark in there, but still, you're not going to get contrast. It's not going to happen. But, you know, it, it, it's just you're not going to get the most out of your, your projector. If you're using this, like most of us have projectors set up in our living rooms or you have it in your den or you have it wherever you may have it at, your environment's going to be dark. It's the only way. And keep in mind, you got people showing off 2,500 lumens, 2,700 lumens. I'm going back here. 2,600 lumen projectors. This is 4,300 lumens. If a 4,300 lumen projector can't travel nine feet and hit a wall and produce an image, then there's a problem there. But a black screen can pull it up. There you go, let's go over to this right here. We'll bring up our fishies. It just goes to show you. You know what I mean? What you're actually really getting, I'm going to go back to my relaxing fireplace. What you're really getting. Now, I guarantee you that some of you probably watching this, I don't know if you have 4,300 lumen projectors, but if this thing is over your projector, then it has you thinking, like, what are you really getting out of your projector? Are you really getting what you paid for at your projector? And I tell a lot of people, unless you got a knockoff, there is, and you got a name brand projector, there's nothing wrong with your projector. Your projector is perfectly fine. 
The problem that you're having is that your screen, you can't produce contrast. Now watch, I'm gonna turn this off right here. And mind you, this, I'm gonna show you what my projection screen's made out of. This is my projection screen. It's made out of postal shipping boxes. And on this side in here, I don't know if you can see it, but in there is a piece of plexiglass. You can go back and replay the video. You will see that I actually taped in a piece of plexiglass into the cardboard box, but you can't see it. And that's also interesting for those of you who may have imperfections on your walls that you may have a little divots and cracks in there. This stuff is designed to fill in all those imperfections so you don't have to do any sanding or any of that nonsense. I don't know if any of you guys remember Goose Screen. When Goose Screen, that company came out, oh my goodness, if you ever had a chance to install on a Goose Screen, anybody who ever did that, ever did it, would know exactly what I'm talking about. It required hours of sanding and I don't I'm not playing with you when you have time go look up a goose screen demonstration on YouTube and I lie to you not it takes about it takes about six hours I think it's around six hours for the screen to somewhat properly dry and it takes no no it, no no it takes 24 hours for the screen to properly dry and it takes up to six months for it to properly to cure because the screen's constantly dripping up moisture and if anybody leans up against that screen, when you're basically in that process of that drying time, you are screwed. You gotta do the process all over again. You gotta sand everything down and do it all over again. That's how screen paint was when I started first started coming out. You had goose screen. And it required you to have a wall that had to be perfectly flat. It had to be like glass because any imperfections would come up on the screen. So that's when I started developing a screen paint that will allow you to pretty much paint over anything you want. So those you've been asking me, can you paint it on your wall? Yeah, you can paint it on your wall. If I'm painting over a postal shipping box, covered in frog tape and plexiglass you can paint that right over your wall all right so we got the uh 4300 lumen projector here shut down i'm gonna move it over here so when these are quite heavy and big it's the size of my son everything's huge and i'm gonna grab my uh, what am I tangled on? My turn. This right here is my 1100 lumen projector. Sony, right there. And that's my adapter. Real quick, for those of you who want to use an adapter for your projector that doesn't have HDMI ports, this is the best adapter I've ever bought. I paid about nine dollars for it. Usually, when you buy these adapters, there's no port for audio, but this one actually has port for audio. And it works quite fine. Just put that in the back of that right there. Let me show you how old this projector is. It's a very, very old projector. This was uh, manufactured, I think, somewhere in uh, 1999. And it's so old that it doesn't have a, um, it doesn't have 16.9. It only has 4.3. That's how old it is. Put this in the back right there. And we are going to run my audio. That's what I like about these particular projectors. I don't think I got enough room here for my sound bar. I dropped the cable. Put my audio right there. If I can get the fit. Let's bring it back a little bit more. There we go. If I can get it to fit. Let's see if we can bring the sound bar this way. We just put it on a slant because it makes no difference. I just need sound. There we go. Power it on. This is 1100 lumens. 4300 lumens, 1100 lumens. 4300 lumens has a better chance of hitting the screen because there's more lumens to drop as it hits the screen. This is my uh, my 1100 lumen projector. It's gonna take a while to warm up. It's an old projector, give it some time. Move over a little bit. Get that screen to focus just a little bit. That's better. So this is 1100 lumen projector right there. This is an old one. So we have 1100 lumen projector. You watch me swap out my projectors. If you want to look it up for yourself, this is the Sony VPL X1000. All I can say is good luck because the projector literally is that old. It doesn't show up pretty much anywhere. 
I had to do some, I had to find somebody who actually had my, the same projector I had, and I had to basically um, go on a different form site and swap info to try to figure out exactly what I was dealing with. I knew it was 1100 lumens, and I know the contrast is 400 to 1. That's it. Contrast on that one is 3000 to 1. So we all know the theories behind lumens. When a projector has 1100 lumens, when it takes off, the farther the distance, the more lumens are going to drop off. The more light you have in the environment, the more lumens you will lose. So the fact that we're starting from the door with 1100 lumens, by the time we reach 9 feet of ambient light, by the time it makes destination to the screen, we are no longer at 1100 lumens. We are way less than that. And that screen is still picking up. And we'll drop our lights give the white wall a fair chance and this answers the questions for a lot of you that are looking at a 4300 lumen projector and thinking okay my projector is 1500 lumens uh how is that going to help me still got light coming into the window there you go Thank you for the likes, I really appreciate it. Eleven hundred lumens, forty-five dollar projection. That's what I paid for about forty-five dollars. So it just shows you you don't have to spend a lot of money when it comes to your projector. You spend what? All this money for these high-end projectors. And like I said before, this model I have here, let me know. Let me know. I'll give you free screen paint. And if you can show me an elite screen demonstration, black diamond demonstration, DMP so and supernova demonstration of them using a, a projector of this caliber. They're not. They're going to use that 4K, that 16K, 8K, whatever they got. They're going to use the most high power projector they can get just to show you that the screen looks amazing. So you got to ask yourself a question. What's doing all the work? Is it the projector or the screen? Look at that. $45 projector. Got to get those deep blues. Deep blues are very important. All right, let me go back here. I know I talk a lot. I'm sorry. You know, I think the first time somebody tells me I talk too much. I think I talk so much because I just want to explain to people exactly what they're getting, you know? And this projector has a 400 to 1 contrast. That's it. Okay, got all my videos loaded up over here. So if you see wonder why I'm swinging the camera back and forth is because I'm loading up videos off my other phone. The reason why I'm going back to the same videos and so I can show you that even with 4,300 lumens and even with a projector of 1,100 lumens, there's not going to be much change in difference. They're going to react almost similar the same way because the black technology gives this 
projector I have behind me, that it's an XGA. Mind you, the Sony is WUXGA. The projector I have behind me is XGA. The Sony's 4300 lumens, this is 1100 lumens. The Sony is a 1920 by 1200. This projector is 720p behind me. The only difference is one is brighter than the other. Look, just look at it. You see a difference? It's reacting the same way. That projector over there cost me $350 used. Original price for it, brand new, is four grand. Got a good deal on that one. The projector I have behind me cost me $45. All right. We'll go back to our burning fireplace. And I'm gonna trot up the stairs. Good gracious, I think I've done this so many times. And I'm right after this, I'm gonna get some, I gotta get some orders done. All right, so I gotta go and I gotta revamp the website because we have the new blackout cloth available. Uh, we are gonna offer, to keep in mind, our screen paint comes with free worldwide shipping, so we can ship it to you anywhere in the world for free and it does come with free blackout cloth now now the size of the blackout cloth is nine feet by 12 feet there's more than enough room for you to have enough play around time with it to build pretty much whatever you want to build with it last but not least let's do the famous star field which i like to do There's a star field on a projector that only has the capability of 400 to 1 in contrast in a fully lit environment. Sorry about that, I do apologize for that. Sorry about that. I'm looking at something else on here. I want to look at check out real quick. Over here I'm looking at videos. That's what I'm doing. Point through videos real quick. Let's see if I can get that to go back a little farther. Here we are. So we can go upstairs. We'll do this again. Lights on, lights off. Let's give that white screen a fair chance. A white wall. Now, I think next week I'm going to go down and get myself a white projection screen, white piece of paper, white sheet, white poster board. We're going to put that all together, do a demonstration so I can show some of you out there who have uh, white screens out there that pretty much. Um, Oh, don't, uh, it, yeah, it works with all, it works with short throw and ultra short throw. All right, so uh, let me pop upstairs and show you this real quick. All right, so I'm going to pause this right here. I want you to check out the greens. Look at the greens on that black technology. All right, so for those of you who ask ultra short throw, so, and keep in mind, this is what my screen's made out of. United States Postal Shipping Boxes right there and some plexiglass. See right there, that little line? That's a sheet of plexiglass underneath there. Let me, um, let me, uh, I wonder, just rip this up a little bit, but I'm not. I'm going to use that for another demonstration outside. All right. The person who was asking for ultra short throw. Yes, it's ultra short throw compatible. I have quite a few ultra short throws down here I own. So we do those demonstrations on ultra short throws also too. We will go upstairs and watch a little, I like doing a little football upstairs. Football or fish or whatever. Let's do, uh, matter of fact, I've done enough football. 
Let's do some 4K fish real quick. I'm going to knock out down here. I'll take this out. Come on, come on, work with me. I'll take this out down here. And then we'll go upstairs. And um, I have my uh, Optima GT 5500 upstairs. No, no, you know what? I'm jumping all over the place. I'll do that on the next. As a matter of fact, uh, the person who posted, uh, does it work with ultra short throw projectors? Send me your email. I think that's easier. Send me your email and or, or basically uh, just box me. Send me your email and I'll send you a bunch of videos that we've done on ultra short throw projectors. Do me that favor right there. And I'll do that for you. Because I have more demonstrations on Ultra Short Throw. I'll basically do that for you. Just send that to me. And I'll set that up for you. Because I have a ton, a ton of demonstrations on it. Alright. Let's take our cardboard box projection screen. Contrast. Four. After. Ain't no secret. Yeah, okay. Sure, my friend. Ain't no secret. If you had watched any of my demonstrations, you would have saw me do a demonstration basically showing off white levels on our technology against another black screen, but you didn't do so, so you don't know. Watch my, before you make comments, go back, check my archives, and check out my work first before you make comments. Because I'll send you some videos that'll make you eat a large piece of humble pie with a large glass of milk, my friend. You haven't seen the technology I produce. I produce images outside. So anytime you want to eat that large piece of humble pie, I'll send you some demonstrations that'll blow your mind. Buy lots of milk. That's all I got to say. All right, people. I'm getting on out of here real quick. I got much to do. Um, hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. We always get that one. There's always one or two. Even when I'm on Facebook Live, we always get that one or two. And then I'll have a customer. I have a few, a lot of customers on my Facebook channel. They'll start sending videos to the fellow. There's a fellow. One of the customers asked you was telling them, like, look, you don't even know what you're talking about. All right. That being said, I'm going to get out of here real quick. I got much to do. I have to go. Thank you all for your time. And uh, God bless.